My name is Alexander Blum. I studied physics at uh, several universities in Germany and the US. Got my PhD in particle physics in 2009 at the uh, Max Planck Institute for Nuclear Physics in Heidelberg. And then, after some soul-searching, decided to switch over to the history of science. I came to the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science here in Berlin in 2010. And I've been here ever since, working on the history of modern physics, mainly in the first half of the 20th century. And now, for my new project that I'm embarking on, now we're going to look instead at the history of post-war physics and more recent developments where we're also really looking into problems that are still being pursued today. So the new research project I'm embarking on now deals with one of the big, maybe the biggest question in physics. The project, the program to find a final theory, a microscopic theory that will explain in principle everything we see in the physical world. So we have the, uh, the great advantage of drawing on the resources of the Max Planck Society by collaborating with physicists who are actually working on a final theory at the Albert Einstein Institute or the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics in Potsdam Goy. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going there on a regular basis, the whole group, and we're going to be talking with physicists who are actually currently working on the problems whose history we are studying, both to understand what their questions are to the historian, to draw upon their knowledge of the physics and mathematics involved, and in general to get a dialogue going between historians and scientists, which I think is important for both disciplines, both for the huge field of physics to find its, uh, to understand how the research currently being pursued fits into the, the bigger picture, and for historians of science to really not lose that connection to science, and uh, which I think distinguishes them from regular historians, right? To have this dialogue going with scientists, which I think is a unique thing that the history of science really profits from. A major challenge, of course, in doing this kind of history is that to really engage with this work, we actually have to look at the complicated mathematics and the formalism being employed here. So we really need to work ourselves into these papers and not just pursue one path, but actually get an overview. So it's an immensely challenging project intellectually because we really need to do the physics in a sense, recapitulate what people were doing in the physics, recapitulate their, their calculations, and at the same time we have an enormous amount of sources because physics has grown tremendously in the second half of the 20th century, and we have lots of different historical actors, lots of different approaches. The fascination of these, of these big attempts, such as string theory, has not escaped the interest of historians entirely, but I think as far as the, the scope of the project, and its size is concerned, and its systematicity, I, I think we're the first ones to really pursue it in this manner. And not just look at isolated case studies, but really try and get a, a big picture of physicists' attempts to find a final theory. I think we're the first ones to do this, and I think we also have assembled a team that will, for the first time, be able to do this, having the historical, the philosophical, and the physics expertise to bring all of this together to really get the kind of overview one needs to not get stuck on one fascinating detail, of which there are very many.